And so Long, I think, is going to try to change his vote, his 8-7 vote, and not call McNamara number one, number two, to try to get the bill reported. Then on the floor, Morse is supposed to rescind their August resolution to Governor yeah. Tonkin. We think, and the chips are down, he'll run, may not do it, but he, we hope he doesn't. We hope he tries. Russell then insists on offering a substitute, Senator Dick Russell. Yeah. We hope that he will not do that. We think we could get more votes against Morris than we could for ourselves. Yeah. That's not the way we want to put it, but that's the yeah. slip, brief net of it. And we would like to get Morris to offer it if he doesn't, get Russell Long or Smathers, somebody else to offer it. So there have been a lot of promises and talk about it, so let's get it settled and clear up there for not only the people of this country, but our boys and the foreign governments that are watching this debate. And therefore, I move to rescind it. I'm going to vote against my own motion uh, if Morris won't do it. Yeah. Then have somebody move to table that and say, now, if you want to vote with Morris and take the power away and let Morris start running the war, vote with Morris. If you want the president to run it, the administration, the men out in Vietnam, John Westmoreland, why you vote to table. Now, it's that clear and let everybody know it. That would have a tendency to cut off the debate. Now, the Bobby Kennedy group's meeting around, and they want to offer some Joe Rao type of resolution that would uh, show, number one, that the sense of Congress that we ought to escalate any more than necessary or something, which would mean nothing, and they admit that it would just confuse. They've also given some thought, McNamara told me, Bobby told him last night at dinner, that uh, since Russell is going to try to reaffirm it and stick their nose in it, that uh, they might uh, uh, offer a motion to declare war. And then when the vote came, they would vote against their own motion to declare war. And then uh, the Senate, of course, would not declare war. Then they'd say, well, now the American people don't want war. You see, they voted 82 against it. Uh, so uh, the president can't go too far because... Uh, uh, people don't want to do this, and they think would further confuse things. I think it would, too, and I don't think we, we don't know who to declare war against. The Viet Cong is not a political uh, government. Uh, Vietnamese uh, haven't got much of their own they can fight with. It's Chinese that are furnishing. We don't want to declare war on China. The main thing about declaring war is that we just do not know with whom, what treaties these people have. And maybe the North Vietnamese have a treaty that when war is declared, that uh, the uh, uh, Soviet will come to their rescue, like we've got a treaty that we'll go to South Vietnam's rescue. It may be they've got a treaty with China that if we declare war, will do it. So we don't want to do something desperate and get us in a war with China. But they want to offer that to, so they can interpret it that way. The net of all of it is, the simplest, the easiest, and the quickest if we had command and had leadership. I have told Long and Smathers this. I've told McNamara to tell Russell this would be to get Morris to offer his resolution. If he won't get somebody else to offer it, rescind him because they've been promised that. And every hour it's been on television for three yeah. days. That's right. Yeah. Then, uh, then move to table it. So that ends it all. And say it's a vote for Morris as I vote to table is kill it. Right. And uh, then try to get it out. Also, try to get up uh, this uh, uh, economic aid bill that the House has passed, because every day it's just uh, you're going to cut out and the boys are going to start leaving the army out there, the Vietnamese soldiers, we can't pay them. And the government may fall to pieces, and they don't know what they're playing with, and it's very dangerous. Now, I don't believe we've made that sale to our senators. I talked to one or two last night. Uh, uh, Birch by and Mike Monroney and some of them, and they didn't realize it was this serious. And they said, "Why haven't you called us?" Okay. So, uh, if you can get up there and uh, not show any desperateness, but to spend some time in Mansfield's office and tell Vallejo in your judgment that this thing's likely to fall apart, they're going to hold back the money and the whole Vietnamese army is getting support assistance, the Vietnamese government and the economic aid. And the things that we thought Fulbright and Mansfield wanted, the schools and things of that kind, they haven't had money. They've transferred all they've got 
from one fund to the other that they can. We told them last October that we knew it was going to run heavy deficiency, but we let them know in January. Yeah. We sent it up early in January, I believe January the 18th. It's been there now nearly a month and a half, and uh, they've had Gavin and they've had all these others, and now they'll, they're just piddling. So we ought to get rid of Russell's bill, try to bring up immediately the Fulbright bill. We also got to watch that tax thing like a hawk. Right. McCarthy is off base. He says he's an administration critic on the war. I noticed Minneapolis Saturday night. He's jealous of Humphrey. Uh, Bobby is trying to confuse everybody's position. He, he advocated, his exact language is, I favor them participating in the government. He didn't say elections or anything. He just said that television. Now, uh, we have not favored them, and we do not favor them, so there is a definite difference. We don't believe in favoring the communists. We're trying to kill them, and we don't favor them in the government before or after the election. If they were elected, internationally supervised election, uh, on the prime minister, if they elected the prime minister, well, we probably couldn't do anything about it. We, we would oppose it every way we knew how, but... Uh, we think the Laos thing that we got into and got sucked into has been very damaging to us and has been very disappointing, and uh, they've broken all their agreements. They've, we had a neutralist. We didn't have a communist, but a neutralist. But they've still got all the armies in Laos, and they haven't withdrawn. They haven't done a thing they promised President Kennedy they do. So our people are universally against, A, either recognizing them for the negotiations, we, we say that, that we're willing to let them voice be heard, but we do not recognize them as a government, and if they come to the peace table, it'd have to come through North Vietnam. Right. He favors permitting them to sit as an equal. We do not. He favors permitting them in the government. We do not. Uh, if the election were held and they were voted in the government as prime minister, uh, our polls show 80 to 20 that they would not, and no communist has ever been elected to it in any government, anywhere, in Romania or in Hungary or in Czechoslovakia and East Berlin and North Korea, uh, any place have they ever been elected. Uh, Laos, they've always been appointed. That's what he proposed to do. We would be against it. He says Bill Moyers and he are in agreement because Bill says that uh, they're, they're, that would be a subject of negotiations, the Viet Cong. Uh, Bill did not say that. Bill was asked a question, what happens between the uh, uh, peace treaty and the elections? It would be our thought that the key government would just control and have the United Nations somebody else supervise the election. Uh, Bill says that is a matter to be discussed at the, at the uh, negotiating table. So Bobby says that that's what he wants, is to have it discussed so he and Bill Moyers are together. Well, they're not. Bobby favors, quote, permitting them to be at the peace table and to participate in the government. Bill does not permit favor either, or at least the administration does. And Johnson, Russ, McNamara, Bundy, all in complete agreement with Moyers. But Bobby is fuzzing it, uh, I think, trying to get away from uh, point in the communist, I believe he must get a bad reaction. Do you have any evaluation on that, yeah, uh, well, why he's backing and filling and changing? He's all over the place. He's, he has a press conference an hour. He's busy around calling up every pundit columnist and what have you. And at the same time, his friends are saying he's getting an excellent reaction. Well, if he's getting an excellent reaction, he's sure as busy as hell trying to change his position. And so I just have to assume that Bobby is a uh, you know, at first I don't think he knew what the hell he was really talking about when he started a week ago Saturday. All he wanted was to carve out an independent area and be a leader and be in opposition to some degree. But he never was really sure what the hell degree of opposition he was getting into. And I think since that Saturday he has spent all his time trying to fog it over, fuzz it over, and uh, claim that he really isn't in disagreement. But at the same point, same time, kind of likes the idea of all the publicity. If he don't, it would only be interpreted there that uh, he really isn't pro-communist, you know, which is about the way it was coming across to a lot of people. Well, I think that's it. And I, did you see it yesterday on TV? No, but I uh, saw the news last night where they referred to it. 
Uh, it, it, everybody that sat here, now they may be so prejudiced, but uh, I had uh, six or eight people that were with me at lunch after church. And their feeling was that he was trying to favor permitting the communists to come to the peace table. Now, every table they've ever come to, they've taken it over. Every government they've ever been appointed in, if they just minister culture, they take it over because they organize and they know how to do it. Uh, but he was trying to favor, A, they're coming to the table, B, they're participating in the government formed, and C, without saying he favored the communists. Yeah. And that, that's the way we looked at it. And I think that's what he does favor, because Hillsman was favoring that before I fired him, uh, to replace him with Bill Bundy, and he wrote the speech, I'm told. He came back with Schlesinger. Well, I don't know whether his primary motivation is to uh, be in that position or to uh, be in a position where they would say, well, he's got his own team and he's got his own uh, area of activity and he's really a leader. And I think that maybe the second uh, uh, desire outweighs the first, very frankly. But he just wants to, you know, stay out in front there on some damn thing. Well, now, where do how do you see our picture? I think that you and the, Mike get up there and yeah. try to find out what's going on and feel about it. Now, what do, do you see a better position we can take? No, not at Have all. you talked to Mansfield at all? No. Wonder if you don't think you ought to. I will because the uh, Mansfield uh, came back over the weekend, as I understand it. I didn't know. I didn't know whether he did. I understood he might come back this week. Uh, Vallejo is a, sure that he did. Vallejo is the source of a good deal of our yeah, troubles. Yeah. You know that, don't yeah. you? Oh yeah. And you know that he has felt giving up Asia all along. He was a Brooklyn boy that yeah. has never wanted uh, any part of it. Uh, he went out with me in '61, so you have to bear that in mind. Yeah. Uh, now uh, the Bobby folks have been stirring up uh, a lot of the stuff that I said that Mansfield is no damn good, and he. He and Jeanette Rankin and Wheeler were just the same. Now, that was not said at all, and not anything like that was said, although this was said, that uh, when uh, Nelson was raising hell with Fulbright and his questioning, we said, well, that's not anything. We had to La Follette's in Wisconsin. As you know, we had to hire him Johnson, California, and I'm surprised that Kiko hasn't had to yield to some of that. Then we had Shipstead in Minnesota, and that may indicate some of McCarthy's doubts. We had Langer in North Dakota, and that's why we have problems in McGovern and, and Long and, uh, and uh, uh, Young and some of them in North and South Dakota. We had Jeanette Rankin, the only one voted against World War One in Montana, and Wheeler, one of six or seven in World War Two, raised male in the Senate. So these people all have problems, and Metcalf and Mansfield have this very same thing, and you'll find that whole area. Uh, is a problem child, including St. Louis against the Germans. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see long ago. Now, what happened then? Mark Childs and some of them go out and tell Bobby's folks, so they get around and say Johnson is really after Mansfield. Uh, now, I just want you to know all the facts. That's just not true. Yeah, yeah. Mark Childs, who never contacts me, he, uh, he wants to see me today or tomorrow if he could, and I haven't as yet to see him. He will gossip everything you tell him, and I think what I would see him, I think I would see him and tell him you never thought things going better, it's good shape, that we had unanimous Asia Bank developing the House and the Senate the committee, even though they said Fulbright was raising the hell that the biggest proposal Johnson made on Asia, Asian Development Bank, a billion dollars that they reported out unanimously in the committee. Gene Black's going back, he did a great job, but the, the uh, military aid is going to be reported Tuesday in the House, that'll be unanimous. The economic aid's been reported, it's unanimous. That the military aid out of Russell's committee is unanimous, that they already finished the deficiencies they on next year's program. That uh, when Fulbright reports his economic aid, that you're sure there won't be a half dozen votes against it. That they have had the hearings. At the hearing show in the Gallup poll this morning, the Harris poll, that the Dove started with 10 and they still got 10. But what they've done is knocked 14% off of Johnson's moderate course to go over to the Hawks. And they're zigging when they ought to be zagging. And it shows they haven't gained one vote, according to Harris. But I had 63 and dropped 49, dropped 14% on the way I was handling the war because that 14 wanted me to do more. 
So they're driving me near a harder course than I would normally take. And that's what the Harris poll shows, telling me you don't think it's going to make a great deal of difference, Johnson. You think he has a war of limited objectives, that he doesn't want to take Hanoi or Peking. He wants to get them out of South Vietnam. The day they're ready to get out, he'll get out, have an international election, and let them select it. And you don't think he's going to get out, though. You think he's going to put in whatever needs, and what needs will be dependent on how many they send down and what General Westmoreland requests. 